What's up guys, it is Frankie here. It is week 12 of the 2020 NFL season. It's time to make some predictions. I know I've been bad as of late. I know my record hasn't been great, but we're here to turn it around. It's the home stretch of the NFL season. We're gonna turn it around. We start with the first Thanksgiving game, Texans and Lions, the Texans are three point favorites. This is certainly the least appealing of the Thanksgiving games. Uh, Detroit has been awful. I picked Detroit last week. I don't know why I did that. I mean, they just talk about just laying a goose egg against a XFL quarterback. Watson has been playing well as of late. I say that continues. Give me the Texans. Minus three. The Washington to be determines in the Dallas Cowboys. The, the Cowboys are three-point favorites. This, man, this game looked so uninteresting a couple weeks ago. But now it's like, this is a game that could, that, the winner of this game is taking the lead in the NFC East. Which is a show, again, that the NFC East is pure trash. The, it is the coronavirus of sports divisions. Uh, uh, it is the coronavirus of NFL divisions. I'm going to roll with Washington here. Even though Dallas is probably the better team, everything is set up here for a Dallas disappointment. Dallas coming off a nice one against Minnesota. They could take the lead the NFC East. Everything is set up for a Cowboys disappointment. That's why I'm taking Washington here. This might be the first time I've taken Washington all year long, but... Oh, good. I mean, I'll, I'll watch this game, but of course, get, what else are we going to do you know, at that time of the day, Thanksgiving, but... Goodness, <laughs> this looks so bad. Give me Washington. Give me the Washington to be determined, plus three over Dallas. And then finally, the main event... Of Thanksgiving, Ravens and Steelers. The Steelers are four and a half point favorites. Thought about taking the Ravens here for just a second because even though the Ravens have played bad as of late, they play, I feel like they played the Steelers tough. That they're going to be motivated. Division matchup. This is, they're going to be motivated to come out and fire. But at the same time, their offense has been bad. Um, the last, you know, the, the last three out of four games, they've scored, I think, less than 24 points or something like that. They have been just, they, they have not stepped up. The defense has, has regressed. Uh, the offense, again, from where it was last season, has taken a big step back. And I don't know. And now you have, um, you know, the running backs, you know, Ingram and, and Dobbins, who are probably going to be out for the game with COVID. So everything is set up here for Pittsburgh to keep it going. I still don't think Pittsburgh's going to go 16-0. I think they're going to get tripped up at some place, but I don't think it's this week. Um, ben is going for 300. I, I, ben is going for 300 yards in three straight weeks. I say that continues here. The Steelers go to 11-0 over Baltimore and put Baltimore in even a more – in an even more difficult spot of getting to the playoffs. Um, give me the Steelers here, minus four and a half to, I feel like, not crush, not destroy, but uh, severely um, limit the chances of Baltimore getting into the playoffs. Give me the Steelers here, minus four and a half. Raiders and Falcons, the Raiders are three-point favorites. I think I might roll with the Raiders for, for, for the rest of the season here in, in games. Um, I don't know what the rest of their schedule is, but... They've, they've taken on. I have spoken openly about how much I love Kansas City. And the Raiders have played them tough twice this year. They, they beat them once, and they almost beat them here the second time. The uh, Carr was good on offense. The Raiders' offense really stepped up here on Sunday against Kansas City. It just so happened that the final drive, Mahomes just went down the field, destroyed them. Atlanta is uh, bad with their pass coverage. Um, Julio now has his hamstring injury. Uh, the Raiders are a good quality team. They're great on the road. And I say that... Um, that that will deliver here in this game against Atlanta. So, I, 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 again, I'm liking the Raiders. They're a quality team. Um, again, they've played, the best team, they've played the best team in football well twice. I say that continues here against a much worse team than Kansas City. Give me the Raiders. Minus three. Chargers and Bills. The Bills are five and a half point favorites. I'm taking Buffalo. Um, I'm really liking Buffalo in this game. Buffalo coming off a bye. Coming off the brutal Hail Mary loss to Arizona. They've had, they've had a couple they have they've had a week now to let that simmer. It'll be two weeks by the time this game is played. They'll have two weeks to have that whole simmer to get motivated to try to win this game. I think they're gonna use all that anger that they have towards the end of that game. They're gonna put it towards here. Um and even though Justin Herbert will have a good game, I think. Because that's what he's been doing here all year. I, I think now he's the favorite to be rookie of the year after the the, the, the uh, Burrow injury. I think even though he will play well, I think the Chargers secondary will have a bad game. Um, I think Josh Allen will have another good start, and Buffalo will do enough to win this game. Uh, convincing, I say, I say by ten over the Chargers. You know, again, that was a terrible loss two weeks ago, uh, but or, or a week ago, but now it'll be two weeks on Sunday. But I just think Buffalo is. is I, I think. I hope that this doesn't mean people are going to write off Buffalo because they're still a really good team, and I think that they'll deliver here in this game against LA. Give me the Bills minus five and a half. Giants and Bengals, the Giants are five and a half point favorites. I'm rooting for the Giants here. Desperately, I mean, this is a bad game in terms of the teams. I'm rooting for the Giants here. If you can't beat a Bengals team with a backup quarterback, 
Again, and this is the chance here to... Because Washington-Dallas is going to take the lead there on Thursday. The Giants have to win this game. Have to stay alive in, in the fight for this division title. <laughs> They're a bad team, but you have a chance here. You have a chance at the NFC East. Go out there and win it. I say they do it here in this spot. Giving the Giants minus 5.5 over a Bengals team, and I feel so bad for it without Joe Burrow. Um, you know, Ryan, I think it's Ryan Finley. Uh, just, just a terrible situation there. Give me the Giants here, minus 5.5. Titans and Colts. The Colts are 3.5-point favorites. Tough matchup here. Tennessee coming off, uh, both teams coming off impressive wins. Tennessee coming off a great overtime win against the Ravens. Indianapolis coming off an upset over Green Bay. Uh, was it an upset? Green Bay actually, I think Green Bay was actually plus two and a half. It felt like an upset for some reason. I'm like, I just felt like Green Bay was the better team. But Indianapolis coming out, this might have been the best one for Indianapolis this year against the best opponent they've, they've beaten. I think Rivers has been for. I'm relying on Philip Rivers, which I don't know if that's a good thing. I'm, I'm trusting Philip Rivers now. He's been on a hot streak here as of late. Uh, the Colts' defense has really stepped up. I said that will happen again. I, it was, I, think, I think they played each other two weeks ago, and I think the Colts uh, shut down Tennessee there. So I said that happens here again. Uh, Tennessee's defense has not been a, a, as good as of late. I say in this matchup, the Colts uh, win it by about six or seven. Rivers does enough. And again, the Titans will get there. The Titans will still have a, a, a nice game with Tannehill and Henry. But I just think Indianapolis just does a little bit better here. And Indianapolis, I think, takes the lead in the AFC South. I believe they're both of the same record. So I, I think this would give Indianapolis the lead in that division. So we'll see what happens. But I'm taking the Colts. Give me the Colts minus three and a half. Panthers and Vikings. The Vikings are four-point favorites. Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to make of Tucker. I mean, that was a nice first game. But it was against the Lions. Someone has to win this. Don't bet this game. Give me the uh, Vikings minus four over Minnesota. Cardinals and Patriots. The Cardinals are two and a half point favorites. <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I, I have no idea what to make of what has happened here with New England. Um, the whole situation here has been just just when I'm starting to think, okay, this team this team is back. This team is this, this team is going to come alive. Um, they lose they lose to Houston like that. Um, so yeah, they they start off well. Can gets COVID. They they have a complete meltdown. They come back. They think, all right, here we go. They, they, they beat the Ravens on on Sunday night, and then they lose to the Texans. So I'm I'm gonna go back to Arizona here. I'm gonna go back to the Arizona well. Arizona's two and a half point favorites. Like in the Cardinals here, um, I think they will rebound. And they didn't play badly against Seattle, um, but it was just you know, it just that Seattle was just a little bit better there. Uh, I say Kyler Murray here. He comes back. Still in somewhat in the MVP conversation. He's not in the top three, but he's probably he's probably number four right now. I say he gets back in there, he delivers, and they put another um, they, they they bring New England even further uh, to elimination uh, in this year for the first time. It would be in twelve years that they would miss the playoffs. Give me Arizona here, minus two and a half over the Patriots. Dolphins and Jets, the Dolphins are seven point favorites. Let me tell you something. Dolphins, I know the Dolphins <laughs> did not play well against Denver. There's no excuse to lose to the Jets. None. Jets are already eliminated. The Jets are playing for nothing except to not be the to not go on sixteen. Please do not, do not beat the Jets. It would it would be off. Again, I know that the Dolphins are still a young team. I know Tua got benched. There's no reason to lose to the Jets. Don't do it here. Give me the Dolphins minus seven over the Jets. Browns and Jaguars. The Browns are seven point favorites. Even without Miles Garrett, I, I don't see a reason to pick Jacksonville here. They're on a nine game losing streak. You have a rookie quarterback who just oh, looks like deer in headlights, and that's unfair to him. It's just a bad situation, but uh, it's just the Cleveland here. Cleveland's rolling. They're seven. What are they? Seven and three. Um, again, the, the the running game of Chubb and Hunt will deliver um, once again for Cleveland, and I think um, I, I think they're I think they're going to put together a nice victory here over the uh, over a Jacksonville team that is just free falling here. Uh, they're trying to match it with the Jets here to see it's Jets and Jaguars to see who gets the first pick. Um, I said the, the I don't think Jets will get the first pick. I think it'll be the Jets, but I think they'll they'll, they'll still have a high pick thanks to uh, a loss uh, on Sunday. I think Cleveland delivers. Cleveland keeps it going. Give me the Browns minus seven. Saints and Broncos. The Saints are six point favorites. Taysom Hill passed the first test in his how in his can he keep the Saints afloat uh, test uh, that he's got here. Um, again, quality win over the Falcons. Um, did a little bit of both. Did a little bit of passing. Did a little bit of running. I say that continues here. Um, the Saints have a very good run defense, one of the best in the league, and I said that that will uh, limit Denver there. I think, I, I think they're going to get to lock. I think they're going get, to get to Drew Lock there, um, especially in this game. So even though New Orleans is on the road, they're, they're, they're still they're still a good team. The defense has been playing better as of late, um, and so yeah, combination of I think Hill will do just fine. Even if Hill isn't great, he'll do fine enough. And I think the Saints' uh, run defense 
will be uh, will really shut down uh, Denver there. Give me the Saints here, minus six as they keep it going. They're still the favorites to win the NFC. I say that continues. I say they will stay that after this week. Give me the Saints, minus six over Denver. Niners and Rams. The Niners are the Rams are seven point favorites. I'm taking San Francisco here, even though I, all all my upsets this week I don't feel 100 percent about, but I knew I had to pick a couple, and so I didn't want to pick 16 favorites. So I decided to take the, the Niners, and my reasoning for it are the Niners are coming off the bye. They beat the Rams earlier this season, and the Rams are on short-ish rest. Um, the I mean, the Niners have, what, two weeks off, and the Rams are going to have, what, five, six days off um, after their Monday night, after their performance last night, losing to, um, or beating the, the Buccaneers. So I say in this game, I still think the Rams win, because I think the Rams will have, you know, it, it'll be a good performance from Goff, um, Woods, and Cup. Um, but in this game here, I think San Francisco will keep it close. It's a division game. I think it'll be a feisty game, close. And even though I think Nick Mullins will keep it close, even though I still think the Rams will win, I think the Rams will win by about three or four. Seven's a lot of points. So in this instance, I'm going to go with San Francisco here to cover the spread barely over the Rams. Give me the Niners plus seven. I still think the Rams win, but give me the Niners here in a tough division game. Chiefs and Buccaneers, the Chiefs are three and a half point favorites. Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady. The greatest of all time versus the greatest of all time. Um, thought about it here. And part of me wanted to take Tampa. Uh, especially, I think I would have been more thinking about taking Tampa if they hadn't lost last night and Brady didn't look so bad on, on deep passes. But in this matchup here, again, after how bad he looked, I, I still, I'm still not doubting Tampa Bay. I still think Tampa Bay is going to be good. I, Tampa Bay has been good this year, and I say that continues. But in this game here... Against Tampa. Um, I think Kansas City will show their greatness once again. Mahomes is the MVP favorite. I think he'll stay that way. You know, all his weapons of Kelsey and Hill and just, just everybody there. And the running, it just, it, it's, it's, just, it's just too much. Uh, I think a high scoring... I, I'm hoping for a high scoring game here. I think it will be. But I think Kansas City pulls away and gets the win. Mahomes does it again. Give me the Chiefs here. Minus three and a half. Huge, huge Sunday night game. Love that this is the Sunday night game. Uh, rematch of the AFC Championship game they had a couple years ago in terms of the quarterbacks. Not you know, Chiefs Patriots, not Chiefs Buccaneers. This should be a fun, exciting game. Probably the last Mahomes-Brady game we're ever going to get, unless they face off in the Super Bowl. Let's see what happens here. Give me the Chiefs. Minus three and a half, though, um, to take down the Buccaneers. Uh, sorry, this is the Sunday night game. Bears, I'm going to say, yeah, the Chiefs-Patriots was four o'clock. The eight o'clock game is Bears and Packers. The Packers are eight and a half point favorites. <sighs> um, even though I don't know who the Bears quarterback is, even though I don't know who Chicago's quarterback is as of, as of now, Probably going to regret this. It's a big spread. It's eight and a half. But again, division matchup. Just like I use the same logic with the Niners-Rams. Division matchup. And, and I think even, even if the Bears quarterback play isn't good, the Bears defense will be good enough to limit Rodgers just enough. Um, I still think the Packers will win. But I think I think the Packers will win by seven. But that's enough. Seven or eight. That's, still, that's in the eight and a half there. I say Chicago covers the spread. Or maybe... It's like a 12-point game for most of it, and Chicago scores a late touchdown uh, to cover. Uh, backdoor cover there. So, I still think Green Bay is going to win, because I think Green Bay is, is the better team here. Rodgers is playing great. But I think the Bears' defense is going to, and it's a division matchup, I say they'll limit Green Bay just a little bit, and it'll be enough to cover the spread. Give me the Bears here, plus 8.5 over the Packers. And then finally, the Monday night game, Seahawks and Eagles. I'm saving all my, <laughs> I'm saving all my big underdog picks for late. Um, the Seahawks are six-point favorites. I'm taking the Eagles. I'm taking Philadelphia. Seattle has not been as good on a defensive on the road defensively. Oh, they struggled. They struggled for the most part um, on defense this year. Not last week, but they struggled for the most part on defense. I say that continues here. Um, again, they won't be as good. I think we'll see something out of Carson Wentz. Not too much, but I think we'll see something out of Carson Wentz uh, in this game. Um, and I say Philadelphia, because it is a must-win game for Philadelphia here. Because, uh, again, Washington and Dallas is already going to be ahead. The Giants might be ahead of them by then. So they've got to win this to stay, stay in there with the NFC East. And, again, I don't know if it's going to result in a win. But I can also see this being a close one-possession game. Fully, on, fully at home. Seattle not at home. Seattle on the road. Seattle, again, will, will struggle a little bit on defense. Still think Seattle will win because of Russell Wilson. But I still think uh, I think the Seahawks will, will not be able to cover the spread here. I'm going to take Philadelphia. Make it a close, exciting Monday night game. Hope it is, uh, because this could be the this could be a huge mismatch here. But I'm gonna take Seattle. I'm gonna take Philadelphia to cover the spread. Seattle will win, I think, but Philly will cover. Give me the Eagles plus six against Seattle.
So that was my pick for week 12. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to this channel and you like what you see, make sure you subscribe down below for more content just like this every single week. I'll be back on Thursday night with a live reaction immediately after Raven Steelers come back here. We'll have a live post-game reaction to that game and all of the Thursday games. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. God bless. And allow me to be one of the first to wish you all a very happy, healthy, and safe Thanksgiving. Bye, guys. God bless.